Welcome everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed your beverages and refreshments. I like to bribe the audience first before I get them to do what I would like to do. Um, I'd like to start off today's lecture by just having everybody picture tomorrow's work day. What would be the perfect work day? You go in, you have just the right amount of work, your staff is all ready to go, they manage just what they need to do, there's no downtime, but they're not overwhelmed. But that's the perfect world, and we know that in real life, there's downtime, there is um, overwhelming workloads to be um, exact. So, well, think, keeping with that in mind, um, I'd like to think of, I'd like you to think of a uh, example from you're just your personal life. You're doing your chores and your errands. When you're just doing the laundry or picking up prescription, you're just staying there the whole time and doing one thing. No, you're multitasking, and I know what you're thinking. Oh, we're all sitting here to listen to him speak about multitasking, snore. But the strategies that we're going to discuss today are going to be something that we would, um, something we would apply towards um, your staff and an organization as a whole rather than just like your individual workflow. So what we're going to be discussing is strategies for a lean workforce um, to include, uh, I mean, I should say increase efficiency and productivity using two very um, important procedures and strategies, calibration and cross-training. All right, so what are these words, calibration and cross-training? So one of the issues we have is um, we may have, have um, increased workloads or we have downtime and your first reaction, well, if we have extra work, we hire more people. However, in you know times of a down economy or say your company has lost business, the department, uh, departmental budgets and payroll thresholds may become an issue, so hiring may not be the answer. So, what can we do? We've all heard this cliched statement before, work smarter, not harder, but what we're going to discuss today is actually going to go into detail, and it's not just some empty statement. So, um, as you can see here, coordinated workflows equal less waste, more production. Uh, so it's going to be those two aspects of departmental calibration and cross-training. And we'll get into what both entail. All right, so first we'll start on with the idea of departmental calibration. Um, so. Here we have what it says here, know the high level function responsibilities of all the departments. So if you get all the managers together, weekly basis, monthly basis, it depends. You have to apply it to the context of, of your organization. But if you get everybody on the same page, they know who's got this overwhelming amount of work on Wednesday or this month to come to um, up to standards. Um, they have these responsibilities, and this department may have downtime. So you, you kind of get on the same page of what uh, the responsibilities of each department are, what their workload might be at that day. It's in real time, so these calibrations keep everybody um, on the same page. Um, there we are, getting a little ahead of ourselves. So calibration meetings, uh, would, again, would involve departmental managers. Um, one of the really important things is know what uh, things impact other departments, what help them out or derail their productivity. Um, it also lets other departments know what impacts you. You can expect, um, you know, communication between departments if you don't get it out there. This is what the kind of things that we need. And we'll get into some examples of what that uh, means in context in just a little bit. Um, I know some of this might be a little abstract. So interdepartmental communication is key for the lean, efficient workplace. So again, not hiring more people, just using employees in a smart way, logistically. HR training staff is also going to be as important that they're involved because they can give feedback on the status of their capability to hire or if they can't. And then departmental heads can let um, let the training staff know what's needed for, you know, cross training or the new hires to know what uh, what gaps and needs it are um, existing. Uh, another very 
important um, part of this is uh, something called cross training. And basically what this is going to be is each department, the staff, the employees that you have are going to be have a primary job function. What cross training does is take them to a different department, just teach them the duties of you know another job so that not that they have to juggle between getting their primary work functions done and doing this extra load of work. It's just in the case of there's a decreased workload for them. So they, instead of just giving their staff busy work, if it's calibrated, um, they can be trained on um, another department's, um, maybe some of their higher level stuff or um, just busy work that uh, they would, uh, they have an overwhelming amount of. Uh, so, assist with cross trained department has the overload of work. Okay, and then each staff member learns one other department function. So, they decide, they give at least a, a choice of a couple, if you know, not everybody can have exactly their own way, but they decide what other skill or what other department within the company that, you know, they want to try and. Uh, also train and the primary job function comes first. This is going to be very important because if, again, if you're juggling both your cross training and your primary job function, uh, it's just counterproductive for your primary department and ultimately that department's going to suffer. So it's just, just only when there's downtime. That's going to be the key thing is cross training and utilizing that staff who's been cross trained is just when they, that specific department has downtime. And uh, so to get into some context and give an example, uh, we're just going to do a brief case study on customer service department in a health insurance company. Now the nature of customer service is there's periods of high call volume. And basically those employees, they have nothing else that they can do but answer those calls, do what the caller needs or make calls out. However, then also part of that nature of customer service is always low, low call volume times. So reps might have off phone work that they've, they've gotten that done for the day, they don't have a lot of calls coming in, so there's a lot of unevenness of the workload. So this is a great um, place where we can use this cross training um, to train additional staff from other departments on customer service in case there's a, sh a staff shortage um, and there's high call volume demands more coverage. So basically you can also train other departments if there's a, a need of additional coverage when there's high call volume. But conversely, when customer service has those uh, slow service periods, they can cross train to help things like uh, claim payments, authorizations, um, so there's, you know, utilization management and in health insurance that uh, approves services. Um, there's claims mailings that can be done, just as an example. But again, I want to stress that, oh, again, only the primary, um, after the primary work um, is done, um, we're doing this um, assisting with other departments in cross-training work that's not to the detriment of the primary job responsibilities. So how can we guarantee efficiency and productivity in this process? This is very important. We need to touch on that. How can we guarantee efficiency? Um, well, it must be orchestrated. Everybody's got to be on the same page from a management level. So we're looking back to those calibration meetings what's happening this week in your department that we all should know about so that we can keep that in mind. For example, with customer service, they may have an increased, high, uh, uh, increased call volume if another department sends out a little mailing. So in these calibration meetings, it's important that the claims department or the utilization management department lets customer service know so they can um, anticipate that workload. And then it also gives them the ability to say, hey, we might need this other rep from your department if you have um, less workload this week. The other uh, important aspect of this is be having a dedicated manager uh, who directs the subordinate department. So he's the guy orchestrating this, this process, who leads the calibration meetings, uh, understands the functions of all departments, and can prioritize work and handle escalated issues. So what happens when all departments are at a full workload? What happens with this process? Well, again, just stressing the important part about 
that the cross training and calibration should never come and hinder the primary job function. So if all departments continue to meet full workload for an extended period, uh, hiring may be warranted. You may be increasing your business, and at that point, there may be that budget for additional employees. So law of supply, uh, excuse me, law of supply and demand applies here. And then, so what can we expect to the benefits to the company? In the end, that's what we need to look at. What is the end in, in this? It's going to be higher productivity with both the same or lower payroll. So in times for financial hardship, hiring more employees uh, may not be a reality. It's uh, quicker processing and turnaround time, and it also helps for different departments to stay in compliance. Um, so we've been talking about health insurance, but if you are part of an administrative um, team with uh, public education, there's uh, testing and um, deadlines for all those things, so you're staying in compliance there. Or if you're a law firm, you know, you have to answer certain documentation and subpoenas within a timely manner. So these things help with staying in compliance too. So there's another added benefit. Um, and then also with this calibration and cross training, um, there's more input, uh, input on best practices for each type of department. You get more input from different areas. Areas for improvement and suggestions for workflow enhancements is, are as a result as well. And then what's the benefits of the employees? You may seem like we're just, well, let's make them work harder and harder. But this process has been proven to show benefits for the employees, too. Uh, they get experience in other job functions that they may not have had otherwise. So that always looks good on the resume. What, what experience have you had? Well, sure, I mean, I've had, um, you know, provider and member relations for our service team, but I'm also... Um, recruiting new providers for our healthcare network, or I was um, in the processing paying claims, so all these things look better on a resume. And then also a chance for mobility um, gets people a chance to see what else is out there. Maybe they want to move to a different position, or even the chance for promotion. So all this kind of comes out of with the um, with the opportunity of seeing how other departments work. And then less routine reduces burnout. So. Um, you know, I mean, from your own personal lives, if you're doing the same thing every day, it gets tiresome and you complain about having to go into work on Monday, but uh, less routine will reduce the burnout here. So in summary, we just want to reiterate a few points. Um, we're creating an efficient and productive work environment in a lean workforce. So again, that means when hiring isn't an option and you may have even had to let some people go, Calibration of departments, everybody's on the same page. You have a lot less um, redundant work. You know what other departments' needs are. Uh, communication of different processes like mailings or compliance issues that are coming up. Cross-training, so uh, different staff members learn different um, job responsibilities. In the case that they have downtime, they can help out um, and meet the workload of other departments that don't have that same down, but, uh, downtime. And then finally, the orchestrated implementation is super important because if you have just the blind leading the blind, you may offer to help out a different department, but when you really can't spare it or they don't really need the work, so you're just becoming inefficient if you don't have that orchestration. All right, and that's my piece. Thank you for listening, and uh, have a good night, everyone.